I want to start off just by giving um, a shout out to heaven, to Marston Wagner. I knew he was here. Give out a shout out to this man because he got it so clearly. He got it so clearly and he understands. He wrote a tremendous article several years ago in Midwifery Today where he, um, my grandma said, he don't have no tea for the fever, you know? He don't cut no cards. He just shoots, he tells you like straight up. And what we have allowed to happen with the English language, and we've done this, ketchup is a vegetable, ketchup is a vegetable, ketchup is a vegetable. <laughs> Side attack is not an off-label use. It's an on-label, contraindicated drug. And we have allowed people to say ketchup is a vegetable. It's not an off-label use. It's an on-label, contraindicated use. It says, do not use in pregnancy. And I'm a midwife. It's hard to induce somebody who ain't pregnant. <laughs> it don't work. It really don't work. Um, I make it so you'll never get pregnant again. But uh, you'll never get pregnant. So we have fallen into this language game of saying, oh, it's an off-label use. And you know we do that because that's what Viagra was. And see how that worked out, guys. Okay? But it's not. It's contraindicated. It says, do not use in pregnancy. And we forget about that and play, well, we do lots of things that are off-label, and you know, we take an aspirin now and then I have a heart attack instead of giving it a headache. But we need to remember what this is. They have told us, they have told us, they write it on the label. It ain't like, if you can read, it's here, and it says, don't do this. But we don't know that because we're not informed we don't get a copy of that FDA thing that says, no, 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 no. We don't get that. Because we spend a lot of time when we're pregnant just looking at the happy. And I think looking at the happy is really important. But I'm a lot happier when I have my eyes open. OK? You, you, you prepare for all kinds of things that can happen. And then when God and the universe gives you what you want, you're even happier and say thank you. So first off, if I were a birth worker, which I am, I have copies of the inserts from Cytotec that I PDF and I send to everybody who's pregnant. And I don't care what you can say to me. I have clients that say, well, I'm practicing the secret and I don't want to read this. Well, don't read it. It's in your package, you know? And I, and I send it home with them, you know? And I talk about it and my appointments. If we end up transferring, do not. I also have a, a policy that when I'm a doula, I refuse to serve any woman who's going to get side attack. And this is because of Tasha. I'm not going to stand there and watch that happen. I'm not going to try to go to sleep. I'm not. I don't want to carry that memory around the rest of my life. So I don't serve anybody who's going to use, and I say, and if they get to the hospital and you change your mind, I'm leaving. So I'm telling you right up front, I'm leaving you, and you will get to figure this out alone, because I can't carry that on my head. I've told you once, I've told you twice, you make your choice. One of the things that, that happens is the issue of consent. And we are, we in America really, we in America as women struggle with the issue of consent. We said no might mean maybe, maybe might mean no, uh -huh, might be yes, okay? It's, it's one of the smallest words in the English language. It's got two letters next to I, it's like the most popular two-letter word. And we have a problem saying that because we don't want to make people mad. We don't want to be the bad girl. We don't want to be, we don't have, want people not to like us. Okay? We don't want to. So we say everything else. We get talked into stuff. And then we allow people to say to us, and they say it in the hospital all the time, well, your baby could die. You're being selfish. You're being a bad mother. Your baby could die. Well, one thing about a hospital, and I love it when they say your baby could die, they will tell you your baby could die if you got blue toenail polish on. I mean, it's not even have to have any relationship to a drug. If you just, if you don't, if you want to wear your own clothes, they're going to tell you the baby could die. So you don't even have to, like, listen to that, okay? No, my baby ain't going to die because God's not treating me this way, and I'm a smart mother and a smart parent. And I'm a smart pregnant person. And because you've been educated before you got there where your hormones were raging, 
and you're scared, you know you have information, you have faith behind you, all right? And so that's very, very important because we don't say no. Now, as marginalized women and as marginalized pregnant people, we carry an extra onerous problem because the next thing they will say to you is, I'm calling Child Protective Services. And they pull that one out because you won't take off your blue tailing polish. Okay? Now, in most states, I'm a lawyer, so I have to say this with, like, tongue in some part. Um, <laughs> it's illegal. Illegal, as my grandma said, was a sick bird, you know? Um, it's against the law. It's against the law. Of course, it doesn't mean that they're not going to call the police on you. But guess what? My father used to say, I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by 6, you know? So, call the police. I'll have a live baby in a uterus, and I'll be able to talk to you much better. <laughs> Say no. Live with those consequences later, if in fact they come down. Okay? And be prepared. Um, that informed consent is something you have a right to. You have a right in the United States to say no to everything, including the C-section. You just have to have the information behind you to stand there. And we as, and we as people of colors need to understand that in America, in urban areas, black women are getting cut twice as often as white women. So, if I um, existed where I existed years ago across the hall upstairs, I'd use a word like genocide. Okay, genocide, okay. Especially when the laws in the states are changing where we home birth midwives can't serve you anymore once they've cut you. Okay, we can't serve you anymore. So, say, <laughs> I feel like oh, I'm in California, M Mrs. Reagan, I think she's dead. Say no. <laughs> say no. <laughs> no, just say no. And, and, there are, and there are certain, because a tab of side attack will co it costs 49 cents now, Servadil costs two hundred and forty-nine dollars. Um, my apprentice gave me this, which I read from beginning to end on the plane. It's about thirty-five studies. The studies from all over the world are still one trying to figure out how much and what hole to stick it in, what boot of administration. They're still going through. Do I put it in your mouth, in your tongue, in your anus, in your vagina? We haven't yet figured out even where to put it. We don't know where to put it. And we don't know how much to put, because we never did studies of it, which is why it's so cheap. So anything like we don't know the root of, administ of administration and how much, you know, you should say no anyway, right? You know, here's some liquor. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. You should say no and mean no. And the hospital will have one of two choices. Check you out AMA or go downstairs and get that expensive. I'm not drinking the house brand today, thank you very much. <laughs> Go get that stuff, it's the, the good stuff, right? And they'll talk badly about you, but who cares? You'll be alive, you'll have a baby. Just say no, because the chances that you are taking with your life. There's a study that I showed Jenny earlier today that the majority of, of black women who have been in the, in the studies of side attack, uh, compared to white women and to Hispanic women, when something starts to go wrong, fetal distress, white women receive the least amount of C-sections. They figure something else out. Black women are cut. When our stuff starts to go wrong with side attack, their first line of defense with us is to cut us. And it's even more important not to cut us than not to give us side attack because, as Jenny says, we're having smaller babies that are more fragile. A small, fragile baby doesn't need this volcanic eruption to take place and we're losing more. So say no, be prepared. But it's our responsibility as family members to empower our pregnant individuals to learn how to say no. Because for many of us, especially in marginalized communities, saying no to somebody who's got on a white coat, you know, and got the things hanging around their neck, and even to the nurse that's gonna say stuff like, you got yourself into this position, you need to figure out this is what you get by having a baby, you know, and talk badly to them. <coughs> when they're not from a background where we've empowered our children to say no and to stand up for themselves, we have to take that responsibility to continue to raise 
our child-bearing kin, their value, and their right to say no. And if the hospital doesn't agree, put your clothes on, sis. Get out of there. Run for your life. Run for your life. Thank you.